Well, it looks like it's working. Seven, eight. Okay. Um, got my new camera, and I'm centered on this piece of the workbench that I think is really important. Not only that, you can't see any of the mess. If I keep, if I don't touch it, you know, you can't see any of the mess. But I can talk to whatever's going on. I see it's like a glare. I don't know if that's good or bad. Anyway, um, I had the pleasure of uh, being asked to build a, a couple of engines for a young man up in uh, up in Massachusetts, and he didn't have very specific requirements, but he had some. And one was he wanted a one tin chassis for one of or tin uh, tender for one of the trains and. Um, and, a, and another tender for the other. So I thought, well, I'll build on the tin one first. Uh, done that, you know, know what to do. And I go looking through my box, and I have about five different tin chassis tenders, uh, chassis. And um, I root through them, and I think I get one that looks pretty good. Had all the wheels, you know, four steel, four plastic. Uh, the power pickups were in place. Uh, this one did have. Uh, link I changed it but um, it looked like it was intact it looked pretty solid so I started to work with it and then as I as I got on to it I knew this front insulator here was destroyed those insulators can get hot and crack down uh, these are these are okay uh, they're not great but they're okay and this will be for the other tender um, but I had to pull those pull this apart and as I got into it and I started to take it apart I was a little surprised that I found um, these pieces were covered in what looked like to be rubber cement and still are there were um, pieces of tape glued down the upper bushing here was completely gone just disintegrated and the only thing holding this from coming through was layers of plastic tape and rubber cement. Well, I I had to pull this brass homemade washer was soldered to the top to hold it in. These are the rivets and, and you can't tell but this is the... <laughs> it still has rubber cement but this is all that was left of this bushing which is supposed to be that big and all the way through so it was just disintegrated uh, this is one of the solder pieces on top I mean it was just a mess uh, I spent an hour or two cleaning the metal chassis and one of these tangs had been bent flat which I didn't understand because you don't want these wheels to spin around so I proceeded to pry it up a little bit and bend it forward and it just snapped off of my pliers. I threw up my hands, I went back to the drawer and I found this absolutely bare chassis with nothing on it. But it had both of these stops and um, it was complete and it wasn't too rusty. So I went in and got this. Then I had the challenge of finding all the parts I needed and um, Luckily, I have my rivets box. I don't know if you have a rivets box, but uh, boy, I do. And um, in it are obviously the rivets, but also the spacers, the fat ones, the little ones. And one of my challenges was the only uh, the only insulator that I had that fit close was actually too tall. Uh, I needed a smaller one, and I didn't have it. So if I had put this on, uh, it, nothing else would have worked right. So, you know, you got to do what you got to do and take it down to the right height so that it works. Then I had to determine which rivet. I had uh, long rivets, I had short rivets, and I had in-between rivets. It turned out to be the in-between rivet was the perfect fit. So I put this in, I had to enlarge this hole, the diameter is a little bigger, so I had to open that hole up tiniest bit, slid right in. I did have one of the, the standard ones, but I didn't have two. Uh, so then I put the rivet in, I put the parts in, uh, I put the trucks on, uh, all of those things, and then 
uh, you have to hold them in place. The good news is this top of this rivet, if you can see it, if I can get it to you, it, the top of this rivet is absolutely flush with this. So I have an anvil with a pad on it so I can lay it right on top of that anvil and it's protected. It's held in place. It's good shape. Oops, sorry. And, um, and then you you hold all this down, and I have this tool that is really neat. It's it's a uh, it's the riveter, and it's spring loaded, so it does that. When you push on it, I'll show you. When you push on it, it has a spring, and then it goes kabam. And every time it does that, it starts to form it, and it's made in a way that it absolutely rolls the copper out and then back down, so you get a really factory looking fit. If you look at that, you look at this, they're virtually identical, although these might have been replaced. Maybe by me. I don't know. But anyway, great tool for putting these rivets on. It's not cheap. Uh, the rivets are not that bad, and knowing the parts, you have to get them by part number, generally. Uh, but now, I have this thing riveted together, and it's looking nice. I'm going to Put a little solder on here. You got to work fast with this. You really don't want to heat this up. What I like to do is put some solder on, tin the tit, tin the lid of this, and then put a sort of an extender piece on that's highly flexible, and then I solder everything to it. That way, I only solder on these pads one time, and I do it as quick as I can. I don't want to heat this uh, spacer up because it'll it'll destroy it if it gets too hot or premature failure. So I'm um, to that point, uh, but then I thought, well, you know, I'm going to look in here and see, make sure these things are clean, um, where the wheels go and stuff. So I started putting this in and looking inside, and I looked inside and I thought, what the heck? There's there's like dirt or I don't know what. There's something in there. So I start poking around with my little my little poker. Can you believe this went right down my sleeve? So I'm poking around in here, and I find something. I couldn't get it out. So I get my fancy tweezers, really awesome tweezers that take care of things and I pull out if you can look at this this wad of fuzz I, I've never seen that it's like this was on the, the floor and not the track and it was rolling in the carpet and it just rolled up this ball of fuzz inside there so I got that out and it's like, here I am, I think I'm just going to change the coupler and I'm going to have this thing ready in about 20 minutes so I can go on to my next piece of action here. It's 5 to 5. This has taken over two hours to just get this far. And I still need to clean these wheels and reassemble them and clean this and line them up and put them back on. The other thing I wanted to show you, when you put, um, when you go from the link, from the link to the knuckle, is not a bad thing. I mean, there is a piece here, and there's uh, knuckles with slots. You have to get those, and it slides on, and a little piece goes through, and you're done. But you have to make sure that when you do this conversion, this bar needs to be straight now right now with the link it has a kink in it and it hangs down and that gives it the alignment for the link stuff but for the knuckle you want it to be straight out and you want to make sure this is not cockeyed it's a little cockeyed here because I haven't really set it up yet but with this one I did that straightening out and squaring it up and lining it up and putting in the pin so that when I look down to the wheels the, the coupler is not cockeyed, it's not tilted up, it's not bent over, and it's at the right height. So we'll get a nice, good action when we get us back on the track. So those are some things you want to worry about when you get going. And then I just realized that this is so old, it's not made for <laughs> the reverse unit I want to use. You know, there's always something that pops up when you start fixing things from the 50s. Um, I don't know. I enjoy it, but I'm disappointed this whole day was spent on just this part. I wanted to put a new smoke on another engine and test that. Making smokes is always a lot more fun. Anyway, this is what I got done today. The rivets, the spacers, the adapters, the 
insulators, washers, power pickups, special tools. Yeah, but you can do it. Nothing here was rocket science. It was just thinking it through, seeing what needed, making sure it was clean, taking out somebody's God knows what he does. I don't know what people do here, how this happens. Anyway, we'll be back together. I'll show you more on this as I get further along, and uh, we'll talk about it later. All right, I'm going to stop this now and uh, see what else I can get done.